tools are used by some animals to perform behaviors including the acquisition of food and water, grooming, defense, recreation or construction. Originally thought to be a skill only possessed by humans, some tool use requires a sophisticated level of cognition. There is considerable discussion about the definition of what constitutes a tool and therefore which behaviors can be considered as true examples of tool use. A wide range of animals are considered to use tools including mammals, birds, fish, cephalopods and insects. Rarely, animals have been observed making their own tools, e.g., primates, sharpening a stick to use as a weapon, or removing leaves and twigs from a branch and fishing for termites with a stem frayed by chewing. Definitions and Terminology the key to identifying tool use is defining what constitutes a tool. Researchers of animal behavior have arrived at different formulations. In 1980, Beck published a widely used definition of tool use. More recently, this has been modified to the external employment of an unattached or manipulable attached environmental object to alter more efficiently the form position, or condition of another object, another organism, or the user itself. When the user holds and directly manipulates the tool during or prior to use and is responsible for the proper and effective orientation of the tool. Other, briefer definitions have been proposed. An object carried or maintained for future use. Finn, Tregenza, and Norman, 2009. The use of physical objects other than the animal's own body or appendages is a means to extend the physical influence realized by the animal. Jones and Camel, 1973, an object that has been modified to fit a purpose, or an inanimate object that one uses or modifies in some way to cause a change in the environment thereby facilitating one's achievement of a target goal. Hauser, 2000 others, for example Laura Goodall, distinguish between tool use and object use. Different terms have been given to the tool according to whether the tool is altered by the animal. If the tool is not held or manipulated by the animal in any way, such as an immobile anvil object in a bower bird's bower, or a bird using bread as bait to catch fish, it is sometimes referred to as a prototool. Several studies in primates and birds have found that tool use is correlated with an enlargement of the brain as a whole or of particular regions. For example, true tool using birds have relatively larger brains than proto tool users. When an animal uses a tool that acts on another tool, this has been termed use of a meta tool. For example, New Caledonian crows will spontaneously use a short tool to obtain an otherwise inaccessible longer tool that then allows them to extract food from a hole. Similarly, bearded capuchin monkeys will use smaller stones to loosen bigger quartz pebbles embedded in conglomerate rock, which they subsequently use as tools. Rarely, animals may use one tool followed by another. For example, bearded capuchins use stones and sticks, or two stones. This is called associative, secondary, or sequential tool use. Some animals use other individuals in a way which could be interpreted as tool use. For example, ants crossing water over a bridge of other ants, or weaver ants using conspecifics to glue leaves together. These have been termed social tools. Borderline examples play. Play has been defined as activity having no immediate benefits and structurally including repetitive or exaggerated actions that may be out of sequence or disordered. When play is discussed in relation to manipulating objects, it is often used in association with the word tool. Some birds, notably crows, parrots and birds of prey, play with objects, many of them playing in flight with such items as stones, sticks, leaves, by letting them go and catching them again before they reach the ground. A few species repeatedly drop stones, apparently for the enjoyment of the sound effects. Many other species of animals, both avian and non-avian, play with objects in a similar manner and this appears to be consistent with the definition of tool use by Shoemaker et al. 
given above. However, if this is the case, there appears no logical reason to exclude play behavior and object manipulation by domestic pets such as cats, dogs and horses, making them potentially tool users. Fixed devices, the impaling of prey on thorns by many of the shrikes is well known. Several other birds may use spines or forked sticks to anchor a carcass while they flay it with the bill. It has been concluded that this is an example of a fixed device which serves as an extension of the body, in this case, talons, and is thus a true form of tool use. On the other hand, the use of fixed skewers may not be true tool use because the thorn is not manipulated by the bird. Leopards perform a similar behavior by dragging carcasses up trees and caching them in the forks of branches. Use of baits Several species of bird, including herons such as the striated heron will place bread in the water to attract fish. Whether this is tool use is disputed because the bread is not manipulated or held by the bird. Learning and cognition. Tool use by animals may indicate different levels of learning and cognition. For some animals, tool use is largely instinctive and inflexible. For example, the woodpecker finch of the Galapagos Islands used twigs or spines as an essential and regular part of its foraging behavior. However, these behaviors are often quite inflexible and are not applied effectively in different situations. Other tool use, e.g., chimpanzees using twigs to fish for termites, may be developed by watching others use tools and may even be a true example of animal teaching. Tools may even be used in solving puzzles in which the animal appears to experience a eureka moment.